Hey guys, got another load of uh, stuff on the ground. I dug a little hole with my finger. It's a good half inch to an inch deep. So I've got another load on the truck. This one I gotta finish spreading out a little bit. And I've got one more load on the truck and then um, a third, one last load I'll finish this garden section and then I'll till it and then I can do my soil testing. So it's gonna be gonna be good I hope this year. Well, for the first time in a few days there's no sun. It's really dark. Um, looks like it wants to rain today but it's not supposed to till tomorrow so I guess we'll see what comes. Um, it's around mid 60 to low 70 the last couple days in peak um, temperatures according to the weather. We don't have our uh, weather station here yet. We have to go back and get that too. There's a lot of stuff we got to pick up. And that's one of them. Got another load on the truck, but I'm resting. Um, with the leaves and the pine needles in there, it hurts. It really hurts to uh, to work this. So I'm taking a break, a longer break. I actually even took a nap this afternoon. I was so exhausted from the last few days of work. Um, the guy I'm getting this from helps me load it. He helped me this morning unload it, and he says, oh, it is harder to get off the truck. Because uh, when you're driving, it sort of compacts in there. And it is hard shoveling. But it's going to be very well worth it in the end. So I'm going to make it happen. Melanie's flowers are starting to peek through. Some of them are. I think that's all sunflowers. I have to double check with her. Although some look different. Um, then there's a couple here that look like pumpkins or squash. I don't know what all she planted, but, and then over here she's got a couple other things in those two pots. The two black trays aren't doing anything, whatever they are, and most of these didn't do anything. Hey everybody. I've got this device resting. Those two batteries are resting right now. Those were resting all day. And I want to show you, or tell you something very interesting. This little battery was down to 11.5 or something like that. And when the Bedini motor ran out last night. Now this thing has run for three or four entire days. Running that motor, which you've seen, and brought those batteries down there up to 12.18 volts. Now, I would show you the measurements and all that before, I, or I would have done it and all that, but you're going to believe me or not one way or another. Some people are not going to believe anything no matter what I show them, and others will trust me. But when I pulled it off this morning, that battery there, and I checked those batteries, they were 12.18 volts. Now you remember those were down to 3 volts or something like that, I can't remember. You look back on that video, and they were down pretty low. So that little, uh, is that I think a 7 amp hour battery, uh, 7.5 amp hour battery brought up 225 amp hours of battery to 12.18 uh, volts. That is not normal, conventionally not possible. Now I took the little guy, which was originally at 0 0.5 volts when I got it, and I've been running it on the charging it on the Quanta Q3 generator for a while now. I have now got that little guy running the Bedini motor, which is now charging those batteries. Okay. Now normally this tiny little guy, five amp hour battery pack, should in no way ever be able to charge those big boys up. Okay? No way. But it's working. So this is now powering the Bedini motor. It was at 11.49, and uh, I'm just doing a cycle on it. That's as high as it got after resting. That was as high as it could get. Now I'm cycling it. You have to discharge it, and I figured I might as well make it do work, real actual work, by running the Bedini motor until I circle that, cycle that down a ways, maybe do 11, 10 and a half volts or so, or whenever this fails and shuts down because it's too low a voltage for it. And then I'll put it back over on the Quantic Q3 generator and bring it back up. So I'm cycling batteries through now using batteries that I've been restoring to run the devices that are restoring the batteries and that's pretty cool. 
That's really cool. I hope that all makes sense. Um, eventually I'll do an article on this and I'm going to do a Bedini motor build very soon. When my lab is set, to, set up and established here, I will put together a Bedini motor on video. So right now, I'm uh, working on ideas and combinations, soldering my supercapacitors together to, uh, for various ideas and projects. Uh, one of the things is once I get a bank together, then I'll be able to use that bank on the Q3 generator as originally intended, but also as an off-grid portable power pack and also as a vehicle starter battery pack. So I'm experimenting here with that, but the wires are not thick enough, so I'm reworking my ideas now. Got the soldering iron heating up. And I've been working on the chicken coop, which I'll show you later. Right now I'm going to get working on this here. Okay, here's a massive bank of supercapacitors being charged by the generator output of the Quanta Q3 generator. Uh, I just finished soldering these. Now these are sets of five capacitors in parallel. So I, in this way, at, at this time, the way I've configured these, I've got parallel sets of capacitors so that I don't need circuitry for now for balancing circuitry. Supercapacitors need balancing circuitry because if one is weaker in a series connection then it'll start taking more voltage and the others will be taking less if the uh, internal resistance is lower I should say. And it'll take more voltage which will then cause that one to fail which will then cause the others to slowly fail. Now I figured putting five together in parallel if one is weak, the others are going to take up the slack in that segment, so it's less likely that uh, the series setup, that in any entire segment is going to fail anytime soon. Now later I can put balancing circuitry here and have to use a lot less circuitry, at least in my theoretical uh, setup here. Now I've got a series connected set of capacitors, so now I have a 15 volt bank. These are sets of 3 volt capacitors at 400 farads. So I think this is, let me see, this is a uh, this is a 80 farad set right here and then they're going in series so I'm bringing it back up. I've got to do the math but I think I have a massive bank here. I think I have 400 farads if I do the math right, of capacitors right here, which is a massive, massive amount of power. Um, if I get the chance, I'll do the conversion in joules, or if anybody out there wants to do me a favor and show me the, uh, the conversion in joules to how much actual energy that is, but it's a lot of power. It's a whopping lot of power. So eventually I'm going to put this in a box and protect everything from shorting out, because that is the capability of putting out maybe a thousand amps for an instantaneous uh, moment. Now, it's not that dangerous for us because it's only 12, 15 volts DC with your bare skin, but I wouldn't mess around with that. I took off my ring while I'm working around this stuff for safety. Anyway, I'm going to use this to charge it up, and it's coming up. So now the, the, the bigger bank, like I've wired this, doesn't make the, the Quanta charge accelerator jump around so bad. I'm, I'm surprised. The bigger bank it's liking a lot better of uh, supercapacitors. Now over here, forgive the mess, I'm still cleaning up. I'm setting up a bank of three. Now these are series and then I'm wiring them in parallel to see if I can start my truck on this. So we're going to experiment here. But the wires are weak. The wires are small, so I'm going to put on some big heavy-duty leads here for starting. These are jumper cables. I'm going to hook them up here and see how warm these get as I'm trying to run it. I might have to add another bank, not because I need more power, but only because I need more amps to divide the amps between the, the wires. This is a 10-gauge wire right here, So, and this is about a 10-gauge, I think. So that's, what is it, 10? divided by two would give you eight and then uh, I think with each I think we've got like equivalent to six gauge wire or something like that but anyway uh, we'll see how it goes 
All right, now I've got, it's not pretty, but I'm experimenting. I've got parallel banks of capacitors to hook up to jumper cables with big leads so I can try this in my truck. I just hooked it up, it's 10.4 volts combined. Make sure I've got everything correct. Should be all the minuses lining up, the negatives I should, I mean. I'm gonna double check this before I actually apply power, but I did check them individually, the banks, and everything was good. If you hook things up without uh, the proper polarity, you can fry them. Yeah, there's plus out, there's negative out. Um, it's hard to see on these after I've soldered them. But there's my three banks. So I'm gonna flip on the power to the inverter, and that's going to start charging that bank of capacitors. Ten and a half volts, 10.6, 5.8 amps coming in. So that's going to charge them right up to uh, like a 15 volt battery. Well, a 12 volt battery, but it's going to bring it up to like 15 volts before it's done. And you can see it's uh, it's treating it like a lead acid battery. It doesn't know the difference. There's 11 volts. So I'm going to start that. I'm going to bring that right on up. And then I'm going to disconnect my truck battery and see if I can start my truck on this once I've got these charged up totally. See what happens here. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what if it works. Meanwhile, much time has passed and this little battery is still running the Bedini motor. This old battery that was junk is still running the Bedini motor. Now granted the um, voltage is low and there's not a lot of capacity to it but with enough cycles between the, the two uh, charging, discharging, I'm going to use it for charging here and discharging here, I should be able to bring that up. So when it's down to a little bit lower, I'm going to swap that out. This one's cooling down. This was conventionally charged on the uh, Banggood automatic battery charger. So I'm letting it cool down, let it rest for a while before I put it onto the Bedini motor and uh, run this down ways. And then that'll go back onto the Quanta Q3 generator output uh, as soon as, where is that battery bank, this uh, capacitor bank, when they're up there enough to a high enough voltage where my automatic charger can take over, 8 volts, then I can put them over there and put that battery back on here. So I'm having fun and I'm uh, doing work as well. That's up to four and a half, to over 4.5 volts now, the uh, super capacitor bank. Now that is a massive, massive amount of power, of energy in there. So it's going to take time to get that up there to a, uh, a high enough voltage for this to take over. Alright guys, I got some battery terminals on here. And I've got it electrically taped, not so much for protection as for to eliminate, uh, to, to reduce vibration on the wire, uh, the solder connections. So it leaves a vibration uh, reduce the vibration here tremendously okay so now all I got is these hanging out and eventually if this works I'm gonna encase this better and I've even taped the ends of the leads so now I have actual battery poles and I'm gonna go hook this up in the truck and see if I can start it okay guys I have fully disconnected the battery there's a negative terminal and put the capacitors in place of the battery and Melanie is going to hold the camera right there. I go in and see if this is going to start. My truck's battery terminals are pretty bad, so it's not a good connection. So I hope that that isn't going to cause me any trouble. Dome lights on. No. Try. I don't have a proper connection. The battery terminals are garbage. Yeah, I've got a horrible connection is a problem. My battery, truck battery terminals are shot. They had a screw jammed in to make it connect, which is ridiculous. I've got to replace them. Yeah, this is terrible. There's no, no real connection. Let me see.
that I wasn't watching it sparking. Look at that! How cool is that, huh? Well, there we go, guys. It's working. Now I've just got to get the issue fixed with my truck's uh, terminals. They're garbage. And I think I can replace the battery with capacitors. I'm hoping to make the trip on the road. Shut it off. All off. Key out. <laughs> Nothing's hot. Well, there we go. Starting a truck with three sets of super capacitors. Pretty cool. All right, guys. Let me show you what I did earlier in the uh, yard, and that's it for tonight. Hey, guys. I worked a bit on the chicken coop today, but not very much. Um, I got the back wall framed in, which is beautiful. But um, I ran out of good I want to use two by fours and um, I got them over on the deck but anyway the two by fours are all warped really badly or uh, gnarly like this one and I wanted to use two by fours for that last uh, frame piece on the sorry I'm walking with my camera on the uh, the door here I want to frame in the doorway and do all that part with more st solid wood because of the vibration and stresses that'll be on this wall. But anyway, I got three walls framed in for now. And uh, I'm gonna scrounge around for some more. Uh, maybe I can find something in that pile. But that's it everybody. Troy from the Do It Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. Good night.